Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Give him the glory. Great things he have done. Praise the name of the Lord. We shall read for our morning lesson Psalm 107. We are going to read alternately. We will read from the first to the twentieth verse. Twenty. I'm sorry, from the first to the twenty-first verse, and we read the last verse together. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. The redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom I have redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. They will be wandering in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted. Then they cried unto the Lord in Jericho, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. All that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfied the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron. Because they rebelled against the words of God and contemned the, the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their heart to labor. They fell down and their still down. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness, and the shadow of death, and raised their hands in thunder. All that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he had broken the gates of Christ, Fools because of their transgression and because of their iniquity are afflicted. They sold upward all manner of evil, and they draw near unto the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of their distresses. He said his word. And deliver them from their destruction. 21st and last. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Praise God. Praise God. May the Lord add a rich blessing to the reading of his holy word. Praise God. First, I must give honor to God, my Father, to his precious Son, Jesus Christ, to the blessed uh, to the Holy Spirit, praise God, to Pastor Will, Pastor Police, Pastor Brown, to the officers, to all you sweet saints in God's house, I give you praise and thanks unto God this morning. Let us be mindful of the word of God this morning, as it says, oh, that men would praise the Lord because of his wonderful works to the children. Of men. You pray my strength in the Lord. I turn the remaining service over into the hands of Pastor Police and the praise team to do as the Lord pleases. Oh, that men would praise the Lord.
It's a new year. It's a new beginning. Can't believe that two days is a new year. And God, amen. Well, we're in the second. But so praise God for his goodness. And so as we go forth this year, we're gonna give him the praise. Because every praise belongs to him. Even when we're going through our stuff, we are to praise him.
God. Every yes. praise. Hallelujah. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Yes. It's to our God. Oh, come on, somebody. We ought to praise him this morning. Hallelujah. 2000. 2022. Come on, put your hands together and give God a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Every praise. Put your hands together and give God a praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If it hadn't been for the Lord. If it hadn't been for the Lord. If it hadn't been for God. Who was on my side. Where would I be this morning? Hallelujah! If it hadn't been for God, who was on my side, I know I wouldn't be here this morning. So I'm here to give him every praise. I'm here to exalt his holy name. Because truly he is worthy. Worthy to be praised. Words are not enough this morning. To express, to express our gratitude. Hallelujah for all the things that he has done for us. Things so undeserved that he did just to prove his love to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we bless him this morning. Because he is worthy to be exalted. The psalmist said, oh, that men would praise him for his goodness. For his goodness. For his goodness. Hallelujah. It, it is wondrous works among men. We're here to praise him today. To God be the glory. Great things he had done. I feel a little excited this morning. But I thank God. I'm so glad. 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 I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. Hallelujah. While you're standing, there's a word this morning. Hallelujah. I want to share just a few thoughts with you in this new year from the book of St. Luke chapter 4. St. Luke chapter 4 from verse 16 down to verse 21. And, and this morning, I am so glad that Jesus rescued me hallelujah he came to nazareth where he had been where he had been brought up and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the sabbath day and stood up for to read and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet isaiah and when he had opened the book he found the place where it was written the spirit of the lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. The recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all men that were in the synagogue were fastened on him and he began to say unto them this day is this scripture hallelujah fulfilled in your ears praise god praise god may the lord add a rich blessing to the reading of his holy word praise god you may be seated hallelujah let me take this opportunity this morning just to honor our god the God of the universe, the one that sits on high and the one that looks down low, the one that spoke the word and everything that was not, oh, hallelujah, came into existence. And I bless him this morning because it is in him that I live and move and have my being. I'm so glad this morning for his many blessings. 
He brought me through 2021. Lord, there were times when I, I wasn't sure it was going to happen. But God made it happen. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Thank God that he's giving us strength from day to day. And the blood will never lose its power. Hallelujah. And so this morning, I want to thank God for 2022. We have already hit day number two. It is God who deserves the praise, the glory, and the honor. And I just thank him this morning. I want to thank God for our pastors. Come on, Pastor Brown and Pastor Police. Put your hands together. Praise God for the servant of God this morning. Hallelujah. We thank God for Sister Brown. Hallelujah. I thank God for my wife, Sister Lydia. Come on. And we just want to thank God for what he's doing. Hallelujah. In the lives of his children. We thank God for our officers this morning and members and friends and well wishers. Hallelujah. Those who are watching us on Facebook or YouTube, by whatever means God has made it possible, we thank God for you. Amen. I want to take this opportunity to wish everyone a happy new year. May the blessings that God has in store for you be realized this year. May God shine on you, hallelujah, in the fullness of his glory. And may you be blessed. It is the will of God that we be blessed. Amen. It is God's will that we prosper, even as our souls prosper. He said, I know the plans that I have for you. God has some great plans for us. And I'm so glad this morning that his plans are not hinged on the plans of men. Men may be planning to destroy you, but God has a plan to lift us up. And I'm so glad that God's plan supersedes the plans of men. And I'm so glad, hallelujah, that he has everything under his control. And I'm so excited this morning. I want to take a thought like, uh, from this, this text. And as I looked at this text, I've read it so many times, but... I believe God really wants to challenge our hearts this morning. Now, we read, and I'm, I'm so glad for the Bible, the book, the Word of God. It's the most beautiful book in the universe. It consists of the promises of God. In this book, we have, from the beginning to the end, God's plan of salvation. God's plan to save man that is doomed for hell. God's plan to recover man and give him a good destiny. And all in this book, all the New Testament, from Genesis 3 where man fell all the way to Revelation, it's about God's plan of redemption. And I'm so glad for that this morning. And so the text that we have before us is a part of the revelation of God's plan. We read about Jesus. And he was about to embark on his ministry. We, we, last week or last couple of weeks, we were talking about the birth in the manger. Well, thank God he grew up. And he came to be about 30 years old at this time. And the Bible said he came in verse 19 of the text to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And I want you to know that this year is the acceptable year of the Lord. And what does that mean? It means then that God is still in the business of saving souls. God has a plan of redemption. God loves every individual. How many body believes that? It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter how you look. God loves everybody. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the, good, the plan of God. And while man may use different things to divide us, God loves us equally. Hallelujah. In the eyes of God, there is neither male or female. Is that right? In the eyes of God, there is no black or white. There is no, there is no Lord Jesus, Jew and Gentile, but we are all the handmaid of God. The only distinction comes when God says there, is, there are sinners and then there are the righteous. That's the dividing line. And God loves us so much 
that his son came to die so that we can all be righteous. Anybody believe that this morning? Everybody can be saved. It is God's will that all men be saved. And this morning, we, as we look at this lesson, we find Luke is pointing out to us the first, the first part of Christ's ministry. And Luke chose different areas of his life to highlight. And it doesn't mean that he's wrong. It just means that the Holy Spirit told him to write what he wrote. And so we find here that Luke tells us that after his baptism, he went into Nazareth, into the synagogue. Yes? yes. Now, Nazareth was his hometown. Yes. After he left Egypt, the Bible said the angel appeared unto Joseph and said, you can now take the child back to Israel because the one who sought his life is dead. And so Joseph went back into Nazareth. And that's where Jesus grew up. Nazareth was his hometown. And so Luke tells us that he began his ministry in Nazareth. Interestingly, when we look at the book of John, John tells us that the first miracle that he did actually was in Cana, where he went to the wedding and he turned the water into wine. So you find that John went into, John gave us a little more of the history. But it's the same Jesus. And the mission is still the same. And I want you to know, church, that we as believers, we have a mission. We have to put goals in front of us so that we have things to work toward. Because if you don't have a goal to work towards, you will never know if you have fulfilled your task. You hear the Apostle Paul say, I've finished the course. You, you, you see, you, you've got to put goals ahead so you know when you have completed them and when you have done what God has called you to do. And so Jesus here is highlighting his purpose for coming. And he gives us four areas that we want, we want to look at this morning in, in a little detail. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And then he said, you are sent to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captives and to recover sight to the blind and to free those who are bruised. And another, another word there for bruised would be the word oppressed. So he came, hallelujah, to deliver. Those of us who are saved, we can rejoice because this is how we were. But every sinner, and this is, and, and when we look at what Luke is writing, you see these conditions, he's using them metaphorically. By that I mean that these, he's using them, it, 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 to use, use physical terms, but what he's really talking about is the spiritual condition of men. And this is how sinners appear to us in the world. They are poor, they are prisoners, they are oppressed, and they are held captive. It doesn't matter how rich they are. It doesn't matter how well they are physically. It doesn't matter what their status is in, in society. It doesn't matter what their possession is. It doesn't matter if they have no physical infirmity. If they are not saved, they are poor, they are prisoners, and they are oppressed. But thank God for Jesus Christ, the blood came, and you and I are now free to worship God. And so we have to understand that God has given us a mission. And the mission is to reach those who are in this condition. And I want us to understand that anybody who, is, who exists like this and does not accept Jesus Christ, their destiny is hell. Oh, hallelujah. You see, these conditions, people cannot... Cannot, cannot work themselves out of these conditions. You cannot pay your way out of these conditions. There are no resources that you have within yourself that can free you from the bondage of sin. It takes the blood of Jesus Christ. You can't work your way out of these conditions, but thank God for the Redeemer. 
And if you turn with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 61, we find that what we have here is a fulfillment of what was happening. Jesus read and he read from the scroll and he read from Isaiah because Isaiah was talking about him. Isaiah was speaking about him and then he said to them, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your eyes. Today is the day of salvation. This is the acceptable year of the Lord. This is the season of salvation. This is the season of grace. God's mercy is flowing freely right now. And so we have to understand that God has used us as ambassadors to share the good news of salvation. I want you to know that God loves everybody. He loves the sinners. It is the sin that comes into his nostrils that gets him angry. But he loves everybody. Whether you're black, white, purple, yellow, or green, you are God's handmaid. And he loves you. And Jesus died for you so that you can be who God wants you to be. And somebody say amen. amen. So the Bible said, Jesus, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to preach the word. In order for him to be who God called him to be, he had to be anointed. Oh, hallelujah. You need the anointing of the Holy Spirit to be able to empower you to do what you, what God has called you to do. Are you with me? Amen. Now, Jesus, and I think it's clear in all our minds that Jesus is the Son of God. It is also clear in our minds that Jesus is God. Amen? Amen. But a part of, of his mission was to submit himself. He humbled himself and he allowed himself to be led by the Holy Spirit. The Bible said when he was baptized, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And then in, in, in St. Luke, Luke tells us that he was led by the Holy Spirit. So everything that he did, he was under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Spirit in order for you to fulfill your calling. Amen. How do you receive the Holy Spirit? Repent. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. You, nobody can pray the Holy Spirit on you. You got to turn your life over to God. You got to let God wash you with his blood and he fills you with his spirit. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, hallelujah. So, 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 so Luke tells us, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Now the gospel is called the good news. The good news of salvation. Now the gospel does not mean that he's going to make the poor rich. The gospel doesn't mean that he's going to make you economically wealthy. What he's talking about here is spiritual life. Salvation. You become a part of the family of God. Being a Christian does not mean, hallelujah, that you will be prosperous and have a big house on a hill. It just means that your life is now hid in Christ in God. Being a Christian does not mean that you will not suffer. Oh, because every child of God will go through persecution. For those that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But we know, hallelujah, that weeping may endure for a night. Oh, but joy is coming in the morning. Hallelujah. Paul said the suffering of this life is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. The apostle Paul, when he was writing to the Philippian church, 
from the from the Roman prison. He says, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say, rejoice. You can rejoice in your circumstances because you know that the glory of God is resting upon you. You know that God has a plan for your life. Hallelujah. He did not call you and put you in a vacuum just to exist and float around in mid-air. But your life has purpose. God has a plan for your life. So the first word there we find is Jesus said, I came to preach the good news to the poor. To the poor. Now, I love the Greek language because the Greek language is a little more colorful than the English. You see, in the Greek, there are two words for poor. There's a word called tokos, P-T-O-C-H-O-S. And what that word means, it means to be destitute. It means, hallelujah, that you put one hand over your face because you are ashamed of your condition. Are you with me? You see, it means that you, you hide in the shadows. So it's the word that applies to a beggar. The beggar that was in Luke 16. Things were so bad with him. He was so impoverished that he had to beg for his daily sustenance. The Bible said he would eat the crumbs that fell from the rich man table. Are you with me? Then the Bible says there was, there's another word for poor. And it's the word pinerus. And it refers to the widow. Now, the widow, she had something. She had a few pennies. So, yes, she was poor, but she was not destitutely poor. But the poverty that Christ is talking about is when you realize, hallelujah, that you are spiritually bankrupt. When you realize that there is no good in you. When you understand, hallelujah, that your life is messed up without Christ. Then you begin to call on the name of Jesus Christ. In St. Matthew, hallelujah, chapter 5 and verse 3, I hear Jesus say, Blessed are the poor in spirit. You have to understand within yourself that of my own, I am nothing. I have nothing. Nothing to Jesus I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. Lord, there is nothing that I can give you but myself. Isaiah said the best of our righteousness. He's talking about sinners now. Sometimes I hear Christians saying the best of my righteousness is filthy rags. That's for sinners. That's dead works. When you become a child of God, he says let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and bring glory to God in heaven. When you become a child of God, the apostle Paul says you are a saint of God. There is a mark dis distinguishing you from the unsaved. The man who is not saved is poor in spirit. The man who is not saved cannot please God by works. This is why Paul said, for by grace are you saved. I remember Cornelius down in the New Testament was doing some good works. He was giving alms to the poor. The Bible said the man loved the poor. But God, the, the, the angel said to him and said, Go send men to find Peter who will bring you words on how to be saved. Because you need to be saved. Works will not save you. But thank God for Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, God. God bless you, sir. Hallelujah. Satan, you're not going to prevail. Glory to God. He says, blessed, blessed, blessed. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom. Jesus came to preach the good news to the ones who are poor in spirit. You, because you understand that spiritually, you are dead. Yeah? And that's only when, that's, that's the only time you're going to get salvation. When you understand that, Lord, I have nothing. I am nothing. Lord, I don't know how to please you. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Psalm 34 and verse 18. Psalm 34 and verse 18. The psalmist says, you, in order for you to be, to be you have to call on God. 
but you got to come with a broken heart. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. Hallelujah. And save such as be of a contrite spirit. You see, you have some guys out there who seem to know everything. I call them the worldly wise. They want to preach to you sometimes. And so before they even start, the first question is, are you saved? Because if you're not saved, all that you are talking is a Nancy story. You are speaking what you hear somebody say. Because when it comes to Jesus Christ, you can't know him until he reveals himself to you. You have to know him for yourself. And he says that when you are broken, that is when he will come in and he will lift you up. You want to be lifted up? Oh, hallelujah. We got to turn to Jesus Christ. In Psalm 51, when David sinned, he said, Lord God, you know the problem. I was born in sin. I was shapen in iniquity. He says, have mercy upon me, O God. According to the multitude of your tender mercy, blot out my transgression. You, you see, there are some people believe that they're doing God a favor. I'm going to come to God, but I'm going to come on my terms. <laughs> I'm going to come to God, but I'm going to come and I'm going to tell God what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell God how I'm going to live. But you see, in order for you to serve God, you have to be humble. He says, God will not walk with the proud or the scornful, but you have to do what? You got to humble yourself to walk with God. Revelation 3 and verse 17. Revelation 3, 17. Hallelujah. We find John. John was writing to the church. And he said, because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. Oh, you knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. He told the Pharisees and the scribes, he said, Lord, if you would just come and accept, acknowledge that you are sinners. But because you say you have no sin, you will not get saved. Because you hold on to your self-righteousness. You hold on to your good works and your religiosity and your religious practices. That will not save you. You've, come to, you've got to come the way of the cross. You've got to come Jesus' way. You've got to come all to Jesus. I surrender all to him. I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence. Daily live. First Corinthians, hallelujah, chapter 1 and verse 26. Paul is speaking to the church in Corinth. Hallelujah. And you see, you look at what is happening in our society. And you see, not many mighty men are saved. Not, you, you go to some philosophers and you go to some, some great guys who make excellent discoveries and are knowledgeable in the things of the world. But when it comes to God, they are spiritually bankrupt. You see, it's interesting how, and what, Paul, what, what the writer is saying here, he's not talking about economically poor. He's talking about spiritually poor. But, but just a point to note that you realize that it's usually the people who have nothing that turn to God. Amen. The people who have little resources. These are the people who humble themselves and surrender to God. Because they understand that they need a savior. And so Paul says, for you see, you, 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 you Corinthians, how that not many wise men after the flesh not many mighty, not many noble are called. You see, but the poor people, the common people, these are the ones that he will receive. Amen. Jesus spoke about two men that went into the temple. He said a beggar went in and the beggar bent down. While he had his head down, he says, Lord, wouldn't even lift up his voice. Lord, have mercy. 
upon me a sinner. But the publican went, pound his chest. You don't know who I am. I pay my tithe. I'm in church every Sunday. Oh, I give gifts to the poor. Jesus said, the beggar went home more justified than the publican. Because he went with his self-righteousness. The things that he did. But you see, you got to come to God. you got to come his way. you got to come humbly, lowly, acknowledging that you are nothing without him. Amen? Lord, I am nothing without you. Nothing without you. The next, the next, the next phrase that Jesus, Jesus spoke about. He said, not only did he come to the poor, but he came, hallelujah, to those who are held captives. Those who are prisoners. Amen? Amen. And somebody said, but they're not in prison. They're walking around freely. Uh, Hebrews 2 and verse 14 and 15. Listen to what Jesus said. This is what the writer speaks about Jesus. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same as Jesus, that through death he might destroy him that hath the power of death. And we know that Satan. He came, hallelujah, to destroy Satan that has the power of death. Amen? And then the next verse says, and to deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So when you are, when an individual is not saved, they are in prison. Amen. They are in bondage. Amen. They are in bondage to sin. Yes. They are in bondage to their own habits. Yes. Oh God. They are in bondage to different kinds of addiction. They are in bondage to unforgiveness. They are in bondage to their own self-will. But Jesus Christ came to break that stronghold, to break the bondage of sin. Somebody sing, he set me free one day. He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. Someday in glory, his face I shall see. Glory be to God. He set me free. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. When you are not saved, you are held bondage to sin and the guilt of sin. And every time you walk down the road, hallelujah, you hear a voice reminding you that you are in prison. You are in God's prison. And a day of judgment is coming. When the prisoners, if they don't turn to God, they will be released into hell. And so if you're not saved, you are not free. You are bondage. You are held in bondage to sin. When the devil comes, whatever he says to do, you do it. Because he is your master. Oh no, the devil is not my master. The Bible says, He whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are whom you obey. Whether of oh God. Sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. But thank God, Jesus came to free us. The apostle Paul was in prison. He's not talking about physical prison. Paul was in prison in different times. Peter was in prison. The apostles, they were imprisoned. But that's not the prison we're talking about. We're talking about the prison or the bondage of sin. Hallelujah. And it is only the blood of Jesus Christ that can free you from that bondage. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Many people are held bondage to different habits. Alcohol. They wake up in the morning and the first thing they can think of is a drink. Hallelujah. Because they are, their life is so, is so filled with trouble that when they drink and they're drunk, they lose, 
hallelujah, are touched with reality and they get this feeling of euphoria and nothing is a problem. But when the alcohol wears off, then there is double trouble. Hallelujah. And of course, they, one drink leads to another. Mm. And while you are there held in bondage, you are destroying your body, which is the temple of the living God. Because whether you want to believe this country preacher or not, whether you want to take this seriously or not, alcohol destroys the body. It doesn't matter how you feel about it. Oh, hallelujah. The proverb said, drink it and drown your sorrows. But what, 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 watch this. Jesus can break the chain. Jesus can set you free. Jesus can make you whole again. It doesn't matter what it is. He can, he can break the chains of bondage. That's why he came. Hallelujah. He came to set us free. The next thing that the, the writer wants us to look at is the fact that you are blind. Every sinner is blind. Every sinner is blind. Oh, but pastor, I don't see them with a cane. Oh, they're walking. They are spiritually blind. Hallelujah. Because you can't see the light. You are walking in darkness. Psalm 82 and verse 5. It tells us glory to God. They know not neither will they understand that they walk on in darkness. From the time man sinned, man has been walking in darkness until God shows up and illuminates their path. If you don't turn to God, you will walk into the darkness until you head, head straight into the pit. Oh, hallelujah. I want you to understand that God is serious about salvation. That's why Jesus came. God wants man to be restored to him. Man cannot restore himself. It is only God who could restore him. And everything that the Old Testament said about Jesus, it came to pass. All the animal sacrifice, they were pointing to Jesus. In Genesis 3.15, the seed of the woman is Jesus. I, I, am, I, am I talking to the church? When God told Abraham to kill Isaac, that was pointing to Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Hallelujah. God said, I will send a seed. Hallelujah. And the seed came to destroy the works of Satan. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. He came and he fulfilled his mission. Jeremiah 5, 21 tells us, Oh, hallelujah. Hear now, O oh foolish people, without understanding, which have eyes and see not. Which have ears and hear not. So watch this now. There are different kinds of blindness. Really pastor? Watch this now. There are men who are, men are born naturally blind. Are you with me? When you're born in sin, you are naturally blind. Spiritually speaking. Then because of disobedience, God himself blinded their eyes. So that's a double blindness. What do you mean, pastor? Lord. Turn with me to the New Testament. St. John chapter 12 and verse 40. Let's hear what John is saying. And the apostle Paul carries the same theme also. Because you, you, you see, John says, he hath blinded their eyes. Who is he? God. Who is there? Sinners. The Jewish people. Why? Because when God revealed himself to them, they did not obey God. God says, I want to be your God. Did you know that God did not desire for them to have a king? God was their king. But they saw the enemy with kings. You ever see some believers in the church want what the world has and they're craving for what's in the world when God says love not the world 
nor the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. When you start to grab for what the world has, something is wrong. And it is only to your detriment. They saw the nations around them with king. And they wanted king. God says, I am your king. God said, when you, when you get your king, they're going to take your wives. They're going to take your sons to be soldiers. Oh, they're going to take away your stuff. They're going to increase taxes. Oh, but they say, Lord, give it to us. That's what we want. Oh, and did they suffer? But I'm here to tell you today that they, because they did not obey God, God blinded their eyes. John says he hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be, and be converted and I should heal them. That means if you think that you are okay, you don't need God. He just lets you have your way because he knows your time is coming. See, there are some folks who are living very happy now. They, don't, they have no care that there is a God. Oh, they get up in the morning and they live their life. They don't want to be bothered with God. Do you know, hallelujah, that the world look at Christians and they say Christianity is bondage. <laughs> Not realizing that it's the sinners that are in bondage. You have some Christians who believe that they themselves are in bondage. And they wrestle with God. Not realizing that God has given us a liberty and a freedom to live a holy and a godly life. God has given us the privilege that we can walk holy and give him the praise. Oh, hallelujah. It is such a blessing to be free from sin and to have Christ within. To be made a joint ear with Jesus Christ. That truly is a wonderful thing. Coming to Christ is not bondage. Coming to Christ is being able to live free. And you know that whether you die or whether you live. At his coming, I'm going to be with Jesus. Hallelujah. So watch this now. Lord, the time is running. John says, so now they're naturally blind, and then God blinded their eyes. Double blindness. It didn't stop there. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and verse 4, is coming on the screen, Satan has his work too. The Bible says, in whom? The God of this world. The God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. So, naturally blind, God blind them, and then Satan blind their eyes. So, you don't come to God when you feel like it. You don't come to God because you feel like it. You come when he calls. And believe me, every sinner knows when God is calling. Every sinner hears when God is calling. The question is, why don't they respond? Because they stiffen their neck. And they harden their hearts. And the God that we serve, he does not force anybody. Are you with me? If he was to force us, everybody would, would, would serve him. But he gives us a free choice. He said, you can do whatever you want. You can enjoy yourself. Enjoy your freedom that you think you have, that you don't really have, but know that a day of judgment is coming. Amen. And so today he came. Thank God he came. He came to erase all that blindness so that we can receive the light of the gospel. Oh, come on and give God a praise. He came to take away all of that blindness. He came to open Verse 2 says, he opened up my blinded eyes and set me on my way. You see, God can open up your eyes and he can give you the ability to see 
You see, when he healed that, 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 that man was blind. The Bible said from the day he was born. Hallelujah. And Jesus put some spittle on the ground. Put on the man's eye. And he, he, the guy, the guy, Lord, the man asked the guy, who touched you? The guy said, I don't even know. I just know that I was blind, but now I can see. And Jesus did that miracle to show the world that he is the light of the world. This guy was blind, hallelujah, from birth. And the disciples said, Jesus, whose sin caused this guy to be blind? Is it his sin or his parents' sin? Jesus says, neither. But that God would be glorified. You see, what he came to do, everything that he said he would do, that's exactly what he did. I am a living testimony. Oh, come on and give God praise this morning. And those of us who are saved know the power of salvation. And know that when God touches your life, you are not partially transformed. Oh, glory to God. But it's a complete change. Any man in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things, glory to God, are become new. There is a great change since I was born. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Somebody ought to praise him in the house. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be exalted. He is worthy to be magnified. Hallelujah. All that men would praise him. All that men would praise him. For his mercies endure it forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He set me free. He set me free. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 4 and the 6th verse. After Paul informed us that the devil blind our eyes. In the 6th verse he says, but God. Hallelujah. God, God, God. Who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness. He has shined that light in our hearts. Come on, somebody. Oh, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So the, the, the darkness that overshadowed us, Jesus came with salvation. And he has erased that darkness. Took away that blindness. So now we can see him for who he is. And he said, when you can see me for who I am, then you can worship me the way you ought to. You see, hallelujah, we worship God. Not because, oh, we got money in the bank. But we worship him for who he is. He's king of kings. And he is Lord. Hallelujah. Then the final one, the final thought that I want to leave with you this morning on this first Sunday of January 2022. Jesus came to set at liberty them that are bruised. And I said a good word for bruised is oppressed. When we hear bruise, we think about getting, getting a fall and your skin grazed. But you see, it's a little more than that. It's a little deeper than that. You see, oppression, sin causes oppression. Sin creates burdens. Sin comes with a weight. And it doesn't matter what you do. That weight will always be there until you accept Jesus. And it's pardon. Until you say, yes, Lord, come in. That burden will always be there. I believe that every child of God should be joyful. 
If that wasn't true, the Bible wouldn't tell you to rejoice. The writer would say, be sad. But he said, rejoice. Because God has given us what it takes to rejoice. We rejoice because we have hope in Jesus. We rejoice because we know that things may be shaky now. Things may look bad now. But when Jesus appears, oh glory. What a glory that will be. We cannot understand that glory because we are restricted to what's down here. And so in order for you to understand that glory, you have to know Jesus. In order for you to get a good picture of what's awaiting us, and, he, and not even the full picture, just a glimpse. Because Paul says, eyes have not heard. Oh, you're with me. Praise God. I thought you fell asleep. Ears have not heard. Eyes have not seen. Hearts cannot imagine the glory that's awaiting us. So now, what we're going through, hallelujah, we were talking about in Bible study, Paul calls it light affliction. Sometimes it don't seem light. But we've got to look at it from another angle. Because it's light affliction. But when we get there, what a glory that will be. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. He said, cast your cares on me. Because I care for you. So all the things that, are, that would oppress you, that would cause you to be discouraged, Jesus says, put them on me. Can you do that today? Can you cast your cares on him? Can you lean on Jesus to carry you through this 2022? Can you cast your cares on him? Can you wake up in the morning and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Can you wake up in the morning and even though there are circumstances facing you, you say, Lord, I'm going to rejoice today because I know what you have in store for me. And that's a choice that we make. Amen. Amen. You can choose to rejoice or you can choose to be miserable. Christ says, cast your cares upon me. First John 5 and verse 3. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You see, in Christ's days, the preachers, the scribes and Pharisees, they would manipulate the law and they would put burden on the people Jesus Christ said it he said they put yokes on you that they themselves don't want it they can't even carry it they put burdens on the people they put all these restrictions they would come up with new laws to try to get the people under a heavier yoke but Jesus says I'm here to take away the burden I'm here to make your burden light and so this is what he says, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. In other words, his commandments are not burdensome. His, bur his commandments will not cause you to be walking with a crooked back. But he says, I'll take your yoke and I'll give you mine so that you can live this life Praising God. Come on and give God a round of applause. Hallelujah. There are believers who've been saved for 20 years. 25 years. And the guilt of the past. They're still carrying it around. God says I've forgiven you. And I've put it as far from you as the east is from the west. But the old dragon, Satan, the Bible says he is an accuser of the brethren. He keeps reminding you that, do you remember what happened 20 years ago? Well, guess what? It is still there. And you wake up every morning 
and you keep remembering what you did 20 years ago, and God says, move forward. But you are stuck in the same place. And he tries to get you to go backwards when God says, move forward. He plays mind tricks. Mind games. Because if he can mess with your mind, then he will mess up your walk. And he will mess up your progress with God. Remind him of his future. Because his future is sealed. His destiny is sealed. There is no hope of redemption for Satan or his angels. And this is why he molests you. He bothers you. He worries you. Even in your sleep. He put things in your mind. Hallelujah. He lets you think about things that you don't even want to think about. Are you with me? He make you see things that you know you're not supposed to see. Hallelujah. To try to get you off of your game. But hold on to God's unchanging hands. Remember that Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. So he said he came to preach the gospel to the poor. Good news. Salvation to the poor. Amen. Heal the brokenhearted. Those who are held in spiritual prison. Jesus came to break those chains. Are you with me, church? And sometimes I hear, you know, you have, you have some schools now. You have some schools where they're, they're, they're training young men and young women to cast out demons and to break strongholds and to deliver people. But that's Jesus' job. He came to do the deliverance. And I hear about great deliverance ministries. And while I don't want to speak about those things, Jesus says, that's my job. I came to preach the deliverance. It is Jesus who does the delivering. The power is, is in his name. So you don't have to run to another church over there in Miami or over there in a, wherever to get delivered. You can be delivered right where you are. All it takes is a broken and a contrite heart. God says, I will not despise. Amen. The blood, the power, the grace is in Jesus Christ. And when you give him your all, he said, I'm going to give you my father's kingdom. Give me your heart and I will give you my father's kingdom. Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart does the same. Does God have control over your heart? You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul. Amen? And that's our message to the world today. Jesus came to heal, to change. And it's the other interesting thing, and I'm closing, is that he said he came to heal the oppressed. Man, there were many people in Palestine who were oppressed with physical infirmities. Some were mentally ill. Some had demons. Some had leprosy. This lady had issue of blood. Yeah? And Jesus, he knew the woman was coming. You think, you think he only knew when she touched him? He was the one that invited her to the meeting. Because normally, she should have been in isolation. But Jesus put it in her heart. Come to meeting. And she showed up the right place at the right time. Somebody is here today. You may say, well, I get up this morning and say, I'm going to go to church. It is God that put that desire in your heart. You're not here because, oh, I'm going to go to church. God put that in you. And he put that in you because your time of deliverance is now. This is the acceptable, not just year, but day of the Lord. Don't leave this building without saying, Jesus, here I am. 
Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. It's a song that we sing. Behold me standing at the door. And hear me pleading evermore. Say weary heart. Weary heart. Oppressed with sin. May I come in. May I come in. He said I bore the cruel thorns for thee. I've waited long. And patiently. Say weary heart. Oppressed with sin. May I come in. May I come in. He said I would not plead with thee in vain. Remember all my grief and pain. I died to ransom thee from sin. May I come in. May I come in. He's pleading with somebody this morning. And he's saying if you come. As a matter of fact. He's the one that's knocking. And he said, if you open up your heart, yeah. I will come in yes. and I will have supper with you. Hallelujah. Bow your heads right where you are. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you, thank you Lord. for today, the acceptable year of the Lord. Lord, we thank you that despite what is happening around us, Oh God, there are churches this morning that are closed because of the current situation. But we thank you for this privilege that we can be here. And even as we are here, my God, I hear the voice of the righteous saying, Behold me standing at the door. I believe this morning, Jesus, that you are calling somebody to come home this morning. Oh God, for years we've been resisting your voice. For years we've turned a deaf ear. For years, God, we've been rejecting you, not realizing that every day that passes, we are one day closer to our eternity. I pray, God, that you would touch right now. There is somebody who is listening via the internet, God. They don't know you as Lord and Savior. But I pray this morning that your spirit would begin to draw them, Lord. Your word says no man can come to Jesus unless the Father draw him. And I believe the Holy Spirit is still in operation today because he has drawn many of us to the cross. And today we are here rejoicing because we have accepted your pardon. And so we are praying earnestly today that somebody would say, I yield, I yield. I can hold it no longer. Touch a hurting heart this morning. A, a heart that is oppressed with sin. So I'm proud of God, somebody may be here this morning who was burdened with guilt of the past. I pray, divine God, that you would lift that burden this morning. Oh, we are looking to you for help. Lord, Peter gave the prescription. The men said, men and brethren, what must we do to be saved? Peter said, repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Lord, this is the prescription that you gave. Oh, there is no shortcut. There is no other way. It is through Jesus Christ. So we pray, Lord God, that you would touch every heart this morning that is not saved. My God, we live in a society where sin is reigning rampant. Oh God, it's as if there is no knowledge of God anymore in the hearts of men. The hearts of men is all about pleasure and pleasure for themselves. Forgetting that God, you are in control. I pray earnestly this morning, God, that Father, the hearts of men would turn to you. The psalmist said, oh, that men would praise you for your mercy endure it forever. Every believer this morning who is faithfully walking with you is concerned about the life of the lost. And so we are calling on you this morning, God, for mercy. Jesus, grace. Lord, the writer said, we are sin abound. Grace did much more abound. Apply that grace to hearts this morning. 
Oh God. We try to blame everything. And everyone. But the answer is within us. The problem is sin. Sin in our society. Sin separates man from God. Sin causes judgment to fall. Sin causes God to be angry. I pray this morning, God, that the hearts of men would turn to you before it is too late. Oh, God, if there's ever a time we need you, surely we need you now. And so as the church, my God, I pray that you would give us the boldness I pray that you would ignite the fire of the Holy Ghost in our hearts. That even in this pandemic, my God, we would say like Paul, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God unto my salvation. And that we would step out of our comfort zones and begin to share the good news of salvation. That Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. My God, even as we celebrate our own salvation yes. help us oh god to be conscious yes. that there are many out there who don't know you who would love to know you oh but the bible says how can they turn if they don't hear the word yes. and how can they hear without a witness yes. oh god impress upon us the importance of witnessing and sharing our faith sharing the love of god Hallelujah, that they shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. I know with the pandemic, my God, it may seem like it's more difficult, but I know that there are ways that you will put in our path that we can minister the good news of salvation. Strengthen us, I pray. For this new year, oh God, I pray you give us innovative ideas, ways that we can reach the lost. Oh God, there are hurting souls out there, people who are dying without hope, dying and not knowing that Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted, to break down the spiritual jails, and to free those who are oppressed. Oh God, we ask for help in the sanctuary. We look to you by faith this morning, and we say thank you. Thank you for the hope we have in you. Thank you for giving us this glorious hope. My God, we live in this hope. We exist in this hope. We thrive in this hope. We're hanging on to this hope. Oh God, Paul says if our hope, hallelujah, in you was in this life only, we would be miserable. But we hope in you that after this life is ended, we're going to say goodbye. Oh, we thank you this morning. We bless your majestic name. Touch those who are sick right now. Those who are on their bed of affliction. Lord, send a word. Send a song. Just to encourage their hearts. Somebody may be in pain this morning. But I know that you are the one who can relieve all pain, Lord. And so I pray that you would touch right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I may not be able to call every name. Oh, but I, play, I place them in your hands, Lord. That you would do as your purpose, perfect will, hallelujah, would be. Let your will be done this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we say thank you. Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for touching sinners. Thank you for restoring backsliders. Thank you for strengthening the believers. Help us to lift up our heads. Help us to lift up our heads. Help us not to be discouraged. Help us not, oh God, that our faith become weak because of what we're seeing around us. But strengthen us as we go throughout this new year. My God, give us renewed vision. You say, where there is no vision, your people perish. So I pray, oh God, that you begin to work on our hearts. Oh, some of us have gotten tired and weary. But I pray for a fresh injection of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That we would keep on running. Oh, hallelujah. Until you come and receive us unto yourself. I pray for the musicians. I pray for the choir director. Oh, God, that you would strengthen them, encourage them, that you would fill them with your Holy Ghost. 
Oh, we pray that you would touch Kimbrel's heart this morning. That you would save him for your kingdom. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you that the blood has not lost its power. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Come on and give God a praise. Come on and tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated at this time. We're going to move into our Lord's Supper. This is the first one for the new year. And those of you who are, it's open to those who are saved and are walking with God. If you are not saved and walking with God, don't take it. But if you are in a relationship with Jesus Christ and you're walking with him, oh, exercise that liberty because it's a source of life, spiritual life. He says, if you, if you eat his body and drink his blood, he said, you have life in you and he will raise you up at the last day. It's a blessing to partake. But he said in the same breath, if you partake unworthily, then, then, then there are some who are asleep and some who are sick because they did not discern the Lord's body and his blood. God bless you. Pastor Police will now lead you into worship. Praise God. Thy gracious word in me humility.
to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a time, I believe, at the Lord's table, a time of reflection, a time of introspection, a time of examination, a time of celebration. When we think about what Jesus did for us, there was one that was willing to die in our place. That soul so unworthy Amen. might live. Hallelujah. 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 And we can we cannot escape the, the fact that we are here because Jesus laid down his life for us. And we are grateful today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you. Hallelujah. Remember thee and all thy pains. And all thy love to me. Yes, Lord. While a breath or a pulse remain. Jesus. Hallelujah. I remember you, Lord. Hallelujah. On the night he was betrayed, he took the bread. And after he had given thanks, he gave it unto his disciples saying, This is my body that is broken for you. As often as you eat, you do show the Lord's death until he come. Eat ye all of it. Hallelujah. After the same manner, he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it unto his disciples, saying, This is the New Testament in my blood that is shed for you. As often as you drink, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Drink ye all of it. Praise God. Praise God. Come on and tell him thank you, Jesus. Come on and tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, he is worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah.
Thank him this morning. Come on and put your hands together and just thank him. Come on, just put your hands together right where you are and just tell him thank you. Just tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and tell him thank you. Come on and tell him thank you. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We bless his holy name. Anybody glad, glad about the cross this morning? Anybody glad for the cross this morning? Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for the cross. That old rugged cross. One day, we will exchange it for a crown. One day we will exchange it for a crown. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. What an awesome Savior. Oh, glory to God. Somebody say, oh, for a thousand tongues. Oh, to sing praises to our King. He's King of Kings. And he's Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. What a Savior. What a Savior. What a Savior. 
Hallelujah. There was one that was willing to die in our place. That soul so unworthy. So unworthy. Hallelujah. It is not that we were good. Hallelujah. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Just lift your right hands and repeat after me. And when these failing lips grow dumb, and mind and memory flee, when thou shall in thy kingdom come, Jesus, 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 remember me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God. We don't know how know what lie ahead. We don't know what the future holds. We don't know what path our lives will take. And this is why the word of God says, he said, young man, I call you. Because you are strong. And God wants us to serve him. Serve him in our youthful days. When we have vigor. When we have strength. Hallelujah. He says work what is called today. Because the night cometh. Oh hallelujah. When you won't be able to work. Hallelujah. Seek ye the Lord. While he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. We don't know what the future holds. Tomorrow is not promised. There's no guarantee that you're going to wake up to see tomorrow morning. But today, today is the day of salvation. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon thee and give thee peace both now and forevermore. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God. God bless you. Praise God. Thank God for this morning. Those of you who are worshiping with us on Facebook, we thank God for the fellowship. We trust and hope that God ministered to your heart. And we look forward to sharing the word of God with you at another time. May God bless you. May God keep you until we meet again. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you for joining Emmanuel House of Prayer this morning for our Sunday worship service. We hope and pray every song and most importantly, the word of God brought forth today was truly a blessing to you and your family. If this is your first time joining us, we currently have prayer meeting Tuesdays at 8 p.m. on Zoom. Please enter meeting ID. 436-337-528 Bible study is every Thursday at 8 p.m. on Zoom as well. The meeting ID for Bible study is 704-868-378 Please enter password 3333 for all Zoom sessions. And of course, if you are physically unable to join us, we live stream every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. here on Facebook or emmanuelhouseofprayer.org forward slash 
stay connected. If you are in need of prayer or searching for a church home, we here at Emmanuel House of Prayer would love to pray for you and would welcome you with open arms. Join us on our website, EmmanuelHouseOfPrayer.org forward slash contact us. You can always visit our website, Facebook page, or Instagram for weekly church announcements and community news. Also, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page for free, Emmanuel House of Prayer FTL where you can view all past Sunday morning worship services. And lastly, tithes and offering may be mailed to the church at 2820 Northwest 7th Court, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33311. God bless you all. Stay safe and stay connected.